I've got two brand new amps here in the studio, but one of them has to go. We've got the EVH5150 Iconic and the Blackstar St. James. Only one of them can stay. Let's check out some tones and then I'll have to make a decision. Yes, today is new amp day. Well, not quite, because we gotta check them out first. Uh, I had some very specific requirements on a new amplifier. We'll talk about those details in a second. Uh, but I do wanna thank my good friends at Long McQuay, that's Canada's largest musical instrument retailer with stores all across Canada and on the web at long mcquaycom And that website works all over the world if you want some great information on awesome musical gear. Now, specifically Marco at the North Toronto location known as North York. Uh, if you've watched his channel, you've seen him a number of times before. I gave him some very specific requirements on a new full-size tube amplifier, and this was the short list that he provided for me. So what are we gonna do? Well, I get to play with these amps. Uh, Marco is gonna share some of the finer details about each of these amps throughout the video, and ultimately, you get to hear two really cool amplifiers. Let's start by hearing some tones. I understand that you're looking for another great studio amp. So even though these amps are from very different companies and voiced very differently, they do share a lot of similarities. The main one being that they're both two channel amplifiers, both with a high gain voicing and a lower, cleaner gain out voicing. They also share a three band EQ. They both have a built in reverb. They both have a, a line direct out if you just want the raw sound of the pre and power amp section. But they also both have a direct out with each having their own dedicated cab sim inside of them. They both have similar power sections being 6L6 powered amplifiers, but that's where the similarities end. One of the benefits of the modeling era is that it's forced prominent amp manufacturers to provide options that were more competitively priced. And that was actually one of the stipulations for my new amp acquisition that I gave to Marco, one being about a $1,500 threshold. Uh, if we're talking Canadian dollars, the 5150 comes in just below that uh, threshold. Uh, the Black Star is a little bit above that. Uh, if you're keeping score in US dollars, these are both sub $1,500 amplifiers. Uh, this one considerably so, uh, but just a good example of two highly functional, good sounding amplifiers that are more competitively priced. I also wanted something that had multiple channels, had a high gain option, and just some versatility for a recording situation. Now, one of the things that both of these amps have is actually DI capability. So if you're looking to record direct, uh, you don't have to buy a separate load box. You've got full load box capability, plus some cab sim options available inside both of these amplifiers. Now, as I'm set up here, I wanted to sort of level the playing field in terms of doing a good A-B comparison. So I'm actually not using those for this particular example. Uh, both of these amps are running through my Sur Reactive load and then into my computer. And I'm using the same cab sim IR, which I will show in uh, the video, uh, the settings that I'm using. That's the Miko 2 cab IR plugin and that's consistent through all of the tests. Plus I DI'd my guitar and I'm reamping, so you get the same performance just to keep all of the tests consistent. Now, something that's really important to keep in mind when you're listening to the examples is that I actually recorded these amps on different days. I had the, it all mapped out the different tones that I wanted to record. So I knew if I wanted clean or crunch or more high gain tone and just gave each amp what I thought it needed for the part. I didn't try to match it. So it's kind of interesting listening back to the different parts and how they compare and considering that I wasn't trying to match them, I was just trying to achieve a certain tone for each part. So keep that in mind when you're listening to the different examples.
the Black Star, still a very high gain amp, does not have a built-in boost or overdrive to kind of push it over the edge like the 5150 Iconic does. It does have a voicing switch that allows you to switch between the UK voicing and an American voiced type, type high gain amp. Blackstar being a very innovative designed full-size tube amplifier that weighs almost nothing. So it doesn't use a traditional transformer to power the amplifier. Most amplifiers will have a big honking piece of iron to convert electricity for the amplifier to make sound, and that runs an AC type of electricity. Instead, the Blackstar uses a high quality 400 watt power supply that runs DC electricity throughout the amp. This is very critical to the construction and efficiency of this amplifier since DC is direct current, it's unidirectional, it's a lot cleaner, it's a lot easier for electronics to utilize, and by nature of that, you're not gonna get any sort of weird 50 to 60 hertz hum that you get with AC type of electricity. All those things combine to make the Black Star a lot lighter than your regular 50 watt tube head, a lot more efficient electrically, and it makes it a lot more compatible globally because this thing is happy to receive anywhere from 100 to 240 volt worldwide. differences with the EVH 5150 is that they brought back the original designer that worked on the PV 5150, James Brown. I feel good. Yeah, I feel good. <laughs> so this amp is going to share a lot of similarities with the original block letter, but in a more modernized form factor at a moderate price point. This amp is a, still a two channel amp with a three, shared three band EQ between the two channels, has a built in reverb but it also has a built-in boost at 10 dB. It has a built-in noise gate only functioning for the second channel. 
and a universal burn and overdrive switch. The burn switch is designed to give it a similar, thicker feel that the original 5150 sort of had. However, if you're not accustomed to that sound, the regular iconic voicing is gonna sound a little tighter. This would cater more towards someone looking for a more traditional and classic type amplifier, as opposed to the Black Star, which is more cutting edge in terms of what would be considered a tube amp. Listening back to those examples, it was really interesting to hear how some of the tones were almost identical, completely interchangeable, like those high gain tones. And I really didn't try to match them. They were done on separate days. I mean, we're talking two very different amplifiers, but some of them came out really different. Now, when you're considering shaping tone with an amplifier, of course, these amps are not voiced the same. And even EQs, I mean, if my EQ setting was a little bit different, plus, you know, the EQ curves on these amps are probably different. So there's a lot of variables that go in to shaping the tone of an amplifier, which made it more amazing that a couple of the tones sounded really close. Uh, but a couple of them did sound different. Uh, that being said, I think they both have a lot to offer. I think the clean tones were exceptional on both of them. And for me, it's always a cherry on top when a high gain amp has a good clean channel and just really good range of tones uh, between both amps. Now, there was a specific feature of one of these amps that pushed me towards that one over the other one. So, you know, seeing as though I'm spending my hard-earned dollars here, these amps are not being given to me. I have to purchase this amp. Uh, the amp that I've decided to purchase is... Knowing you, Dan, I know the amps you keep in your studio kind of tilt between modern conveniences and traditional and classic type uh, workflows and sounds, which is kind of why I picked these two amplifiers. That being said, I don't really know which one you're going to pick. <laughs> so I'm really curious to see which one you're going to end up going with. Ah, Marco knows me so well. All right, well, it's time to make my decision. Now, just one thing I wanna say here is that this decision is based on my preference and my needs here in my studio. I did a video recently where I checked out three different guitars, same thing, Marco provided a short list, and ultimately I bought the one that was best for me. Amplifiers are much the same thing. It's an extension of your instrument, and if you're looking for an amplifier, you want an amplifier that's gonna, number one, give you the features that you want and the tones that you expect, uh, but it's gotta feel right to your ears and you know, plugging your guitar into an amplifier, it's, they just work so well together and you wanna know that it's the right amp for you. I would be happy with either one of these amplifiers. And I'm not just saying this, I'm actually purchasing this amp with my own money. So I wanna make the decision that's best for me. But I had a chance to spend a lot of time with both of these amplifiers and I'm really impressed with both of them. It's a lot of amp for the money in both cases. And I wouldn't be disappointed if I had one or the other, but I did choose one. And the one that I have chosen is the EVH 5150 Iconic. And for one simple fact is that there's just more features on this amp, more ways to shape the tones. Whereas the Black Star, we've got two channels, but we've got a clean channel. And then we have the two voicings on the high gain channel. With the 5150, I like the fact that the clean channel is crystal clean if we want it, but we've got the overdrive switch and we've got the boost. It just gives you a full range of tones on that clean channel. And then with the high gain channel, same thing, we've got the burn switch if we just want you know, a different color. And of course we have the boost as well. And the 5150 has presence and resonance settings that the Black Star doesn't have. That's just an additional stage of EQ shaping that I find useful when shaping tone. So it just gives me a lot more options within the same amplifier. And that's something I tend to lean to. It's not always gonna be that way, 
Uh, there's other things I have on my list that I want to get, and it's not always based on versatility. But when two amps are pretty similar, they really could sub in for each other. They could do the same gig. They can do the same recording session. Um, in a studio setting, having more tweakability on the amp to me, I just find it just gives me a, a wider range of options or I can dial into that tone that I really want. Who's to say you can't put a boost into this and you can't use an EQ pedal or you can EQ it in the DAW. It would sound just fine as well. And it mustn't be overlooked that the Black Star is so light. So if I was gigging, it might be a different conversation. But for me and my money, this one is actually a little bit cheaper and I get some additional features uh, to help me shape the tone and is the reason why I chose this amplifier. So I'm really excited. I gotta, well, head over to Long Quaid and give him my credit card and we'll be welcoming the 5150 here to the Lonely Rocker studio. So I'm sure we're gonna get to hear it uh, many more times here on the channel. Anyways, I would love your thoughts on this. Uh, if you're playing along at home, I'm just wondering, do you think I chose the right amp? Given these choices, which one would you choose? Uh, you heard the tones. I would love to hear what you think. That's what the comment section is for. And once again, I wanna thank Long McQuaid. You guys have been awesome and they provide all kinds of cool gear for this channel to help me make videos just like this. Uh, please show them some love. If you're in Canada, they got almost like 100 stores across Canada and on the web at long-mcquaid.com. And a special thank you to Marco and the guys at North York uh, for helping me out once again. So if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. And remember, you don't need a band to rock and roll, and I'll catch you in the next one. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I've got another one waiting for you right here. If you really want to help the channel, check the description. I've got all sorts of affiliate links. I'm on Patreon if you want to do a deeper dive with me, and I've got Lonely Rocker merch. It's all in the description and it all helps. And I look forward to seeing you again in another video.